Now, from Vaishno Devi in India's Jammu and Kashmir to Tirupati in Andhra Pradesh, security forces are deployed to provide protection to both devotees and the holy sites. And this happens across the world. But if you talk about Jerusalem, a different picture emerges. Jerusalem has been in the grip of the worst bloodshed for years over the past 10 days. The reason? Israel's decision to install metal detectors at the entrance of the old city's holy compound. A Palestinian man has stabbed to death three members of an Israeli family. Israeli forces have shot dead three Palestinians in clashes. And now two Jordanians have died after an Israeli guard came under attack at Israel's embassy in Amman, which is now, according to the latest reports, been evacuated. So what is this controversy? We're talking about the holy site known as the Harm al-Sharif to Muslims and Temple Mount to the Jews. Israel installed metal devices, metal detectors at the entrance of the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the 16th of July. These devices were installed two days after two Israeli policemen were shot dead by Palestinian attackers. The detectors put up at the entrances uh, were for Muslims using to enter this compound. These metal detectors, in fact, uh, were installed, they were already in place for tourists visiting the site. Palestinians are upset because they were not consulted. Israel says Jordan, the custodian of the site, was informed well in advance. Israel has also installed surveillance cameras at the holy site. Palestinians are protesting. Turkey has condemned Israel's move. The United Nations is expected to discuss these developments. Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu is facing the heat. The Arab League now saying that he's playing with fire. So what really is going on? Why is the putting up of metal detectors such a big deal? Joining us, Arsen Ostrovsky. He's the executive di director of the Israeli Jewish Congress. Good evening, Arsen. Thanks very much for being with us here on Gravitas. How is the situation on the ground today? Hi, thank you for having me. Um, look, uh, the situation on the ground, uh, there's no escaping it. It's very tense. Um, last evening, we buried three members of the Solomon family who just on Friday evening as uh, you know, millions of Jews were sitting around the dining table for the Holy Sabbath evening. Um, a Palestinian terrorist came in and murdered, quite literally slaughtered them. It was, uh, the scenes were absolutely incredible. It was just an absolute bloodbath. And a week before that, we buried two soldiers who were murdered um, on the Temple Mount, which really precipitated this whole crisis. Um, Look, you know, you said in your opening, you know, you spoke about the detectors and, you know, there shouldn't be any issue about the detectors. There's nothing, um, you know, out of the ordinary about them. You, you have them at major holy sites throughout the world, the Vatican, the Mecca, even Taj Mahal. You know, you have security, you have detectors there. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the detector, the, the metal detectors, it's not about them. I think it's really an excuse. You know, the, the Palestinian leadership, you know, they're very fast to jump on any chance to, I think, to distract from their own internal dysfunctions and their own internal political warfare with uh, Hamas. And they are experts at, you know, creating this contrived outrage, which at the end of the day, we are where we are because of this incessant Palestinian incitement, the fanning of the flames, uh, you know, the lies such as, you know, uh, Al-Aqsa is under attack, which it is not. The Prime Minister has made very clear the status quo will be maintained. Um, they've, you know, they've called for uh, the liberation of Jerusalem of Al-Aqsa. So it's really issues like that, I think, that are at the forefront of uh, what ought to be the main uh, concern here. The detectors, a necessary security measure, um, I think at the end of the day, that is uh, just an excuse for the Palestinians. Uh Critics say that Israel changes the definition or the, the, the meaning of status quo on the sly all the time, and that, is, that was the effort here as well. They also say that Israel uses disproportionate force in, in situations like this, and uh, was it really necessary then to bar all Muslim men under the age of 50 from entering the mosque this Friday? Did that not aggravate the situation? Look, the, the re you have to go back a step. The reason the extra security was there in the first place was for the sole reason that two Arab terrorists um, encroached, um, sorry, three Arab terrorists encroached the Temple Mount. They smuggled weapons in there and in very much in cold blood murdered two Israeli officers. So the security measures were the absolute minimum and not unlike 
in any major holy site around the world, like I said, in the, from Mecca to the Vatican, um, including to what we see at the Temple Mount, uh, including at, even at the Taj Mahal. Was it disproportionate? Certainly not. You have to bear in mind the rioting that we saw in the streets uh, for the Palestinians that were being fanned by not just the Palestinian Authority, who were themselves calling for rage, the Arab League, who were insisting this was not a terror attack, a lot of the local preachers. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, the situation was, um, was very dangerous then. The Israeli police and security acted, I think, uh, responsibly and with a maximum possible restriction under the circumstances. Mahmoud Abbas has halted security coordination with Israel. Uh, Arab nations are meeting, I understand, on Wednesday to discuss the situation and have warned Prime Minister Netanyahu that he is playing with fire. How big a blow is it to whatever was left of the pre peace process? Uh, look, there hasn't been a lot left of the peace process since uh, Mahmoud Abbas himself has refused to negotiate with Israel. Um, you know, you have to, he has to look, look, look in the mirror. Israel has repeatedly said that uh, its hand is outstretched for negotiations. But Mahmoud Abbas, instead of accepting this hand, instead of coming to the negotiating table, instead of, um, you know, what is really called for now is a sense of, uh, you know, his, uh, his leadership is calm. But instead, um, we see him calling for rage. We see the Fatah, his own party, uh, calling on their supporters to liberate Al-Aqsa, saying that it's under attack, which it is not. So, you know, at the same time as, um, you know, Mahmoud Abbas is threatening to cut off security, which at the end of the day is much more of a concern, I think, for him um, than for Israel. We will survive. For him, it presents much more of a challenge without cooperating with us. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, the, you, ha you have an option. He can act like a responsible leader. The Arab League, the neighbors uh, from Jordan, Egypt, Turkey can act like responsible partners, including the international community. If then, as long as the international community, you know, if, as long as they look the other way to this Palestinian incitement, uh, to the fanning of the flames, they themselves essentially become complicit in the violence that we're seeing. So I think what is really called for now is cool, responsible leadership. It's a call for calm. Um, Israel has said it wants the status quo. It's mm. keeping the status mm. quo. But at the end of the day, we see the Palestinians, instead of showing leadership, calling for rage. The second intifada began at this very mosque. And uh, while all sides are calling for calm, where do you see the situation? Do you see it flaring up further in the days ahead? Um, look, it's, it's difficult to say. Right now, it's very tense. Um, there was a very brutal terror attack on Friday evening, as I said at the beginning, where three members of the one family were slaughtered. Um, today, just today, we saw um, in Petah Tikva, which is a town in central Israel, a Palestinian terrorist stabbed an Israeli, thinking he was a Jew, and by the way, he was an Israeli Arab, um, saying that this is for Al-Aqsa. We're seeing what's happening in, uh, in Jordan um, with the Israeli embassy that came under attack. I believe the Israeli embassy in Turkey is being closed for security reasons. Um, so the times are very tense right now. It's difficult to say where it is heading. It's certainly developments... Uh, um, very fluid and uh, developing very, uh, very rapidly. But at the end of the day, I think what's called for, you know, I think most we need the international community, the United Nations, we need e Egyptians, the Arab League, um, hopefully as well our Indian allies to call for calm and to exert pressure on the Palestinian Authority to, instead of calling for rage, to uh, take a step back and to try and... Um, call for, you know, a cessation of uh, violence and return to very immediate negotiations to resolve this issue in a peaceful manner. Well, we hope that happens sooner rather than later. Arsene, thanks very much for joining us here on Gravity.